Okay, so here we are in Inroads, um, where we've had a tunnel created um, by the road team. The tunnel itself is a, uh, a, a, a meshed object, um, and here we need to, to give this tunnel some detail. So we need to provide some gripping points for us to, to latch onto within this tunnel. So if we go into a perspective mode, um, it means we can we can roll into the tunnel itself. We just need to have a bit of move camera on, so we're actually moving with the camera. So inside the tunnel here, um, we need some gripping points. Now you'll see these, these yellow, red, and a gray line up on the surface of the tunnel. These, these lines we'll use as our, as our gripping points. So if we look at this tunnel, um, we want to turn off the mesh so we can see what uh, individual lines we have available to us. And if I hover over this, this, this mesh here is on the level road pave concrete. So we'll just turn that off. And we have a second mesh here which is on channel concrete. So we'll just turn channel concrete off as well. So what we're left with is a whole bunch of line strings um, going along the tunnel. Now we don't have any much, we don't have much individuality in terms of these lines. So what we'll do is we'll start to put these lines on, on uh, different levels in order to then be able to grab hold of them. So let's take a look at how we may uh, create these uh, uh, or our own individual lines on the surface of this tunnel. So I'm just going to turn off my um, perspective view and uh, here's the tunnel here. Now one of the other models in uh, this particular file is a, is a 2D file. This is where we do everything in plan. So let's go to the 2D file. You can see the plan of our tunnel there. So a couple of things we need to do here. We need to create some levels, uh, hook up, uh, or, and then create some element templates and hook those element templates up to what we call features. So under our level manager, I'm not going to get too technical on how um, or the different names of levels we could use. We're just going to create a, a series of levels called string. So it's just a matter of copy, paste, and continue pasting until you think you've got enough that you can break this down into, and then edit up the levels uh, to suit. So here it might be uh, string two, and then just change the color for visual visual purposes. So here we are with those uh, new levels created and we've applied some color to each one of those levels. I'm going to shut the level manager box down now and I'm going to go into what we call our element templates. Uh, that is under element and element templates. And under here, if we expand the first one. The first blue one here means it's element templates in our active uh, uh, file. The gray ones are other DGN libraries in our, on our system. So we expand that, we've got linear. So in, in here in linear, we are just going to create um, some new element templates. We have some existing ones here. I'm just going to copy and paste, oops, and paste the existing uh, so we can populate those with our new levels. Okay, so we've got string one here. I'm just going to rename that to two and I'm just going to change the level here from string one to string two and we complete that process of copy pasting replacing it with our levels and we're done on our element templates okay so now once we've completed our element templates we can hook those up to what we call feature definitions and those feature def definitions are what we will be defining the template to create as those line strings so over here on the left hand side we have Project Explorer. If you don't have this open, you can open it by clicking this button here. And over here we'll see the feature definition called linear. Under here we'll create a new category. And because we're going to use this primarily for mechanical components, I'm going to create a uh, called mechanical. So what I might do is use one of the existing ones. Uh, I'll right click and say copy and I'll paste under mechanical. And I will just give it a rename and call it string one. And 
then I can right click and look at the properties. And you'll see where the element templates are looking at the walled horizontal, which was the one I copied. So I'm just going to replace that with my string definition. Here I have a different one, so I'm just going to leave that as is. And, uh, and you can repeat that process until you've got those nine string lines. Okay, that is now complete. So what we can do is then edit our template, which is the uh, profile that um, forms the uh, tunnel. So if we click on our tasks over here under corridor modeling, we have edit template drop. And if I zoom in here, I can hover over uh, this blue uh, corridor here and up pops our template. Now you'll notice around the tunnel we have a number of different points that are forming uh, the tunnel. Now these points are faceted meaning they're straight lines from one point to the next but we're going to uh, but we're going to uh, change a few of these points so we get some individuality out of the uh, line streams it produces. A way to do that is to hover over one of the points, right click and say edit point. And this has already been done, so here's string one. I'm gonna start at the, the bottom there and uh, work my way up a few points till I get around the uh, circumference of the, um, the tunnel there. So I might skip one and do the next one, edit point, and I'm going to make this guy string two. You say apply then close and I'll work my way around the tunnel adding those feature definitions to the points. Okay once I've done that I am going to select OK and what you'll see down the bottom is the process bar it's just updating the uh, corridor for the uh, left hand or for the right hand side tunnel depending on which way you're going and once that's done, we can then flick to our 3D model. And then, what we should find under our levels is we have some individuality going on. So if I say all levels off, and I turn on the string levels, you can see now that we've got some individual levels or individual line strings here that we can now grip onto uh, using another application to either uh, build out the tunnel with structural components or attach mechanical components to. So here we are in uh, generic components. Um, this is where it's generic components running in EKSM, uh, in the EKSM Connect and the later series of V8i uh, generic components as part of the EKSM product. This allows us to, to use computational design to make those uh, links to the um, rail or the to the rail uh, model that, or the tunnel model we're, we're using in inroads. So first of all we need to reference in that uh, particular model. So open up the reference file dialog box and we'll attach that model. I'll use the 3D model and say OK. And if we fit the screen there's our model there. Okay, so just to, just for a bit of clarity, we'll turn off all of the elements that we don't actually need to use. So we'll go to our level display, click on the reference, and we'll turn all of them off. Now, just for the very basics of hooking up to something in this model, we should turn on a level called Geometry Centerline, and we'll make a, a give an example on quickly how we attach to to these particular guys here. So first thing I'm going to do is go to a top view and I'm going to place a couple of points. Now before I do that, uh, let's just get our generic components model up, up, up and running. Um, if I click on this particular object up here, place point, it'll ask us to create a base coordinate system. We just say yes and say OK and that creates a base coordinate system down here. That we can use for various functions. Zoom on in there. There we go. 
go is our base coordinate system. So um, what we can do here is, as I said in the top view, we can place a couple of points down, and what we're going to do is place a, a range box around those. I might just quickly go to um, wireframe mode, you can see those two points there, easy to see those points. The other thing we should do as well, um, we have a transaction list here, and if we hit control S, or we hit the uh, record recent transaction there, it records the creating of the base coordinate system, point one, point two. so it's like a history that we can run through. Okay, so the range box that we place around here will be used to capture these particular elements. Now, we use these nodes here on the left hand side and the easiest way to, to use these nodes is to yeah, drag them and drop them from here over to our graph window. Okay, so here's my range box um, and I'll just hook up the range box to these points and you'll see what happens here. If I choose point one here and hook it into the low point and choose point two and hook it into the high point, we get a range box. <coughs> Now we need to just extend that. So if I just zoom in on, on here, we've got the, the point. We'll hit the move button up here and we'll move that node up so it's surrounding hook the geometry. Great. Okay, so now we need to turn these lines into something that the general components can recognize. Now if we go back up to our level list, you'll remember that we turned off a particular all our levels bar one. So we use this particular level to select these particular uh, lines here. So it's geom center line. So over here we might drag a B spine curve over and we might do a create a B spine curve by create a B spine curve by from elements within range. Now sometimes these elements that come from uh, the linear applications, we don't know what kind of geometry it creates. It could be a B-spine curve, it could be a curve, it could be a polygon, polyline. So that could be, well, it's a bit of trial and error here to figure out what it is. Well, let's have a go anyway. Okay, we'll use elements in range and we'll attach by, or we'll filter the names by level names. So in here we might just type in our um, level name. So a couple of inverted commas, geom, into a line and then we enter and we'll hook the range box up to there. Okay, doesn't like that. No appropriate elements found within range. So just double check the spelling of your level. That looks fine. So it must be a different type of um, object. So I might just copy that level name out of there and let's try a curve. Drag that in there again from elements in range as our method, and we may hit levels there. All good. Paste that in, and then drag over the curve. Okay, it doesn't like that either. All good. Final final attempt here. Let's add in a polyline elements in range sure to turn on the level first because it will it'll try and grab everything that's here which we don't want. And then elements in range. And there we go, they must be classed as polylines. That's fine. All, all trial and error and with we, we now understand what, it, what this might be. It's a series of um, polylines that runs across there. We can do things now, for example, if we wanted to turn this into a, a B-spine curve, that's not a problem. That's one of the, one of the options in the B-spine curve, and it is from polyline. So all I need to do is hook that guy in there, and we have ourselves a polyline. Okay, so um, um, lots of different ways we can do this. Uh, we can delete this node we don't need. We might use this later on. We might use this now. It all depends. So the next thing we might want to do here is potentially place uh, what we call a coordinate system along here. 
and we might place it by a particular spacing. Now let's have a look at this. Let's say, for example, we go to the coordinate system in here and we did a coordinate system by spacing along, by spacing along curves. We can select a curve, we could choose either the beach by curve or the polyline, doesn't matter which one, and the spacing we might make 5 meters. Okay, so what we've managed to do here is create coordinate systems along that curve at a spacing of 5 meters, and same with that one. And you'll notice if we go into a top view as it goes around the corner, it, it lives perpendicular to that beach by curve. So what we can do, which is quite handy here, we can use these uh, coordinate systems to place a circle. And that circle will indicate a tunnel. And that tunnel will be a circular tunnel like what you get with a tunnel boring machine. So if we drag the circle option in there, we can do a... Um, we can have a look at the different types. We could do a, have a look at circle by radius. Okay, we can choose the center point, which might be the coordinate system. Okay, the radius itself. The radius itself might be, let's say, eight meters across. So we'll put four thousand as the radius, and the support could be one of the planes on the coordinate system. Let's make it this plane here. If I hover over that, it tells me which plane it is. It's the XZ plane. So what we can do is turn that on as a value. Come down and say XZ plane, and we'll click it and pop it in there. Okay, so there's a whole bunch of circles that run the length of this particular guy. That's the very basics in hooking up uh, something to um, to generative components. Um, you can then take that further by doing things like, you know, creating a uh, B spine curve uh, by using loft curves and you know lofting uh, a surface along there. If we went to our illustri illustration mode, we can see that we have um, you can see there that we have uh, a um, surface running along them. And if we wanted to, we could uh, turn off the visibility of those circles so we could see right down the, um, the length of the tunnel there. Okay. Now, the main trick here is going back to inroads and adjusting the actual uh, curve here. So if we, if we click on one of our uh, points here and we pull this curve out this way, like so. And inroads would adjust parametrically. And it's an idea just to hit control or just to hit save there, just to save that. So it pushes that change through to generate components. You see the little pencil here. We can right click and say reload. You can see the alignment line move. So all we need to do now is just update our, our model and you'll see that that tube and all its features will then pass through onto the, the red line governed by inroads there. over it goes.